Hi, how are you guys today? And welcome, 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 welcome to the Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show, Black Art and Culture. I am so excited today. We have an amazing artist with us today. His name is Weldon Ryan, and I have his little um, Instagrams <laughs> rolling down. That's what I love about live um, because there's just so many things that you can have going on. You can have so many things going on, and I have this like, uh, um, so many things, different things up and going here. Let's switch to this one so I'm not having to scoot down <laughs> for that one. Um, I am so excited about having Weldon here. Um, he is an amazing artist, and he comes to us by way of uh, the Republic of Trinidad, um, and he has been uh, in the U.S. for a long time, but he, this is his culture, and he shares a lot of his culture in his art, and I am just um, just can't wait to bring him up so that you guys can see him. He, um, he just enjoys creating art from his uh, background, his culture. It's, his work is very vibrant and colorful, and fun and festive. I, I, that's that's basically how I can explain his work is that it is very exciting, it is very colorful, it is very fun and very festive. He works in figure, he does figurative drawings. Um, he is actually um, a graduate of, hold on, let me see, he is a graduate of, I'm looking, I'm looking right now at his, uh, the fashion is to technology. He's actually, but he actually had a lot of background in drawing and things like that in high school that he, and, and he and I talked for a long time. And so I'm not going to share a lot right here because I want him to share with you guys what his background is and where he came from. But wait till you see his work. Just wait till you see his work because the colors are just going to pop out at you. They're going to grab you and he'll bring you into these amazing stories um, through his art. And that's what I got out of it. I was drawn in from the first time I saw his work on my Facebook page and just loved it. Just absolutely loved what he does. And I love his spirit. He and I talked on Thursday and I just love, I fell in love with his spirit and his family. They're all like one big ball of creativity. So without further ado, I'm going to bring him on because I'll just keep talking and then it, I, I won't be as interesting as he is. So I'm going to bring Weldon Ryan up and hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. It's uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. I was like, let me bring you up because I'm not as interesting. <laughs> oh no, you don't sell yourself short. You're very interesting. You know, I saw your website and everything else, and and uh, I've seen your work a lot. So oh, you know, you're, you're familiar you. with me. You know? Thank you. Well, I I love your work. I love what you do. I love your colors, and I actually pulled out a video um, of you actually working on a piece. So we're going to actually, we're going to play that too. And I'm going to let you kind of walk us through it a little bit. Cause I did go to your YouTube channel. Once I got your link, I went to your YouTube channel and I was like, Oh, he has some really nice stuff up there. So yeah. we're definitely going to share some of that. But before we get started, I want you to kind of share with us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, gosh, uh, I've had a lot of stops. <laughs> you know, I started I, I started drawing a long time. I was it probably um, in second grade, actually even before that, that I realized I had the talent. But uh, you know, it was uh, through uh, elementary on that uh, you know uh, people always criticize. You know, they they always uh, ask me to draw and do things for them, and I had this artistic talent. And mm -hmm. you know, it was uh, the seventh grade that I really took off because um, I got, of course, as, as a youth, uh, at my age, we were heavily into comic books and the Marvel generation and uh, as well as uh, DC Comics, but, you know, I was a Marvel fan anyway. But of course I drew comics. Yeah, yeah, that is true. 
But you know, I drew comic comic book characters with my my buddy, and uh, you know, uh, from there, um, the teacher, the, uh, my 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 art teacher in in um, um, middle school, uh, that, you know, said I should uh, explore moving on. So I took two tests. I took the test for the high school art and design, and the test for music and art. And uh, music and art for for those of you who who was about my age would understand. You know, the the television series Fame. Was filmed and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, I was Coco. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> but but I mean, it, it's it's a beautiful building and, and it's so artsy and everything else and it's so collegiate and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I took the test on that day if, uh, to go there on 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 a, a snowy, icy day, and it was just terrible. It was hard to get to, and it was like I had to finding the train connections and everything in New York City was really tough. But I took the exam and everything else, and I was so psyched to be there because you know, mm -hmm. music and art. Of course, you have art, and then you have music and all the other talents. So right. that was right up my alley. As, as you probably you know, as you're an artist as well, how we fall into all of these avenues of things that mm -hmm. we like to do, right? And, and yeah, so so um, uh, I later on took the test for for the high school of art and design, and uh, it turns out you know I got into the high school of art and design, and that was on 57th Street, Second Avenue in Midtown Manhattan. It was it's definitely you know cult uh, uh, a, a culture. Um, catastrophe for me because honestly you know I, I grew up in the Bronx mm -hmm. and uh, and I didn't know anything about all that really just what I saw on Dynasty the television show whatever <laughs> <laughs> so so getting introduced to being away from my neighborhood was mm -hmm. a good thing because um, it was Thomas Jefferson was a notorious high school in um, uh, in, in in the Bronx and that's where I'd have gone. And, uh, you know, um, it, it turned out that it was the best thing to go to art and design because I met all these multicultural people and everything else. And, and my ideas started to change. And I saw other artists, you know, that were talented. But it was also a commercial art school as, a, as opposed to um, uh, as opposed to um, um, music and art, which is more fine art. Mm -hmm. so, so after that, you know, I went to SUNY New Paltz for a year. Uh, I should say I had one teacher that really introduced me to oil painting, Max Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. And you know, if y'all look him up, he's 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 a terrific artist and teacher. Okay. Um, okay. And and so so um, after you know he introduced me to the world of commercial art really because um, when I saw what he did for a. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the New York Flower Show was an annual thing every year in New York City. This was like in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so he did a whole commercial spread on buses and, and trains and television uh, magazines on that. His illustrations was fantastic. Then he did an illustration, uh, a set of illustrations for the New York Marathon. So I mm -hmm. said, this is where I want to go. Later on, of course, he did, he did uh, uh, book jackets. Mm -hmm. For Dell Publishing and, and and Harlequin Romance and and all these um, other other uh, uh, publications and of course I was sold. I wanted to be a commercial yeah, artist. Yeah, you said you wanted to do book jack. <laughs> yeah, I, you know I was serious about that. He introduced me to oil painting, my palette, and everything else. So uh, you know I said something wrong. I said Thomas. Jeff my wife went to Thomas Jefferson. I should have said. <laughs> Uh, uh, Theodore Roosevelt. It was Roosevelt High School in my neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. I hear her stories all the time about Jefferson. <laughs> all right. So <laughs> you would have ended up going to Theodore Roosevelt. It's great that you actually had the opportunity to choose. Uh, you know, I grew up in Chicago. So, you know, okay. it, at my time, you went to your high school or things like that. And even because I did, I had the same art sort of thing, but yeah. um, we just you, you didn't, didn't have, have you those didn't have kind of elements? Like, we didn't okay. have those kind. Um, okay. I had like a, we had a vocational high school and I ended up going uh, my last two years at a vocational high school. I did that, but it's different. I'm, vocational yeah. is, this is your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, you know, fortunate to, for for you know the New York City school system because there were schools for everything, automotive, mm -hmm. uh, aviation. Right. I mean, it was it was a wonderful place wow. in that it afforded a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, but but you know, uh, after Max, I mean, I I decided not to go to the School of Visual Arts. It was like a few schools. I, I wanted Pratt Institute because 
Pratt Institute is a fantastic place. And and uh, two of my favorite artists, actually, there's a few artists that I know they come from there. Leo and Diane Dillon, I bought all their, their children's books for my kids. And the way that they paint cultural things was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it was it was there um, or the School of Visual Arts, mm -hmm. and I decided not to go to either because for for one Pratt was too expensive for me to afford, and so was the School of Visual Arts. So I ended up going to New Paltz, mm -hmm. a state school, and then I I went to uh, Fashion Institute of Technology because I realized I just didn't want fine art per se. I right. wanted to be a commercial artist, you know. Mm -hmm. So and, was, uh, was was becoming a commercial artist tied into um, finances or that was just something because I know a lot of artists, um, they they're 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 fine artists, but they go into commercial art because it's like, well, if you're going to go into something, go into something where you can actually make a living. And yeah. so a lot of artists go into commercial art um, to kind of jump jumpstart their career because. Um, you know, uh, you and I are probably around the same age where it's like, you can't make any money doing that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. You right? know, where, where family members and everybody is telling you, you're going to be a what? An artist, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, well, quite honest, I, I didn't have that direction. It was, it was, you know, my mom, you know, she raised me and honestly, she was busy working, but she supported my art habit, I would say, you know, because she'd buy me supplies and bring me home things to work and paint and whatever. And whenever I needed supplies, she was always there to, to support that. But the whole notion of uh, making art from uh, money from art, uh, I didn't think about the fine art aspect. I was totally sold on illustration. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, with that, uh, I transferred down to FIT, and and uh, and it was a fashion school, but they had uh, uh, they had just launched uh, the second year is where I came in uh, a general illustration program. Mm. Yeah, and uh, and you know, but the first year of FIT after well, it's a two year you know associate's program, but after the the first year was all drawing and all okay. experimental stuff. It was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Because the amount of drawing I did, I, I mean, my drawing skills like grew leaps and bounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and you know, then the second year we had illustration and we talked about concepts and so forth, and and we did those kinds of assignments. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, we we had I had mentioned something before um, a while back uh, about technique, and mm -hmm. and you know, uh, honestly, during that time, I mean, my drawing skills was phenomenal, but I didn't learn technique. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's that's what kind of propelled me to some things other than um, acrylic, pen and ink, or anything like that. I, I went directly. I continued on with my my oils. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because we did talk. One of the things we talked about was um, a lot of times in school, it's more about technique as opposed to creativity. And yeah. so, do you feel like while you were in school, um, it it kind of horns your tech your technical skills as opposed to because the creativity you came with you came with that just because um we also talked about do you consider yourself a self-taught artist yeah well yeah and and my concept of, of self-taught is far different than, than the norm because i i believe as an artist we're ever growing we're constantly teaching ourselves how to do something right the art school primarily is to to teach you or give you a structure mm -hmm. and and that's really what it's based on but everything else is on in your lap mm -hmm. you really have to develop that right but you know uh with with all of that i mean honestly it was really tough trying to make a living back in the eighties of uh, doing, you know, taking your book around. Um, and I guess models call it go see, but we call it drop offs. Mm -hmm. So you drop off your book on, on Tuesday, mm -hmm. your, your portfolio and pick it up on Thursday. <laughs> and, and if you're lucky, you got an assignment, but that's right. how it was. And so it was really, really difficult. So, you know, based on that, you know, I had no medical, uh, no health insurance and no income. So, you know, uh, I took and some you were in New York City. It's like if you yeah. can't land something in New York City. <laughs> well, yeah, you see, but the, the thing that we have, to, you have to have some sort of connections mm -hmm. in that because the competition is fierce in New York. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean. Honestly, uh, doing book jackets for Dell Publishing and, and, and the Harpers and all those other map publications. Mm -hmm. I mean, the talent was the talent pool was drastic. And if you didn't have a connection, 
Right. Uh, you out in the pavement for quite a while. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I did some some intern work for, you know, paste up mechanicals and, and I did my living primarily on paste up mechanicals right. without computers. That was those days. There was no computers. It was back at in the all. day when you had to take the cut and you had to paste it. <laughs> yeah, we we well one place well it was rubber cement primarily, but one mm -hmm. place was sophisticated and, and actually the wax, the mm -hmm. wax for paste up mechanicals became the norm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was using wax to, to do mm -hmm. my pay stubs back then. We had no computers. And the yeah. company I was working, I was interning for, um, they started they started the first Mac and it was a little box, whatever. I forgot the right. I remember, it. I remember, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I've I've had several. My brother was a uh was a cut and paste. He he used to work for uh Cinemax movie theaters and he'd do all of their movie movie layouts. Oh cool, cool, yeah. <laughs> You know, and and of course, I mean, my my best skill was was marker rendering. So mm -hmm. so I did some renderings for some ad agencies and so forth. But the way that worked is you were kind of part time. You were seasonal. You come right. in, you do stuff, and then they they don't need you. They move you on, and then you have mm -hmm. to wait. So it was really difficult. So I decided, you know what? I'll take those civil service exams. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I landed was being a park ranger in New York. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah but but the one thing i always say to people is that you know don't give up on your art because your art never gives up on you right and it always helps help you land someplace right so now as a park ranger did um how did that influence your work i because you know i mean you're out in the park and you have because i know you're a figurative draw you draw you you do a lot of figurative work so, yeah. but now you're out here, you're in the trees, you're in the animals and all kinds of things. So did that influence your work in, in any way or impact your work in any way? Well, the funny thing, it, it came back to help me down the road. I'll explain to you later on about okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, it, it was really, um, it was good because there was an aspect of, of things I, I really didn't explore. So it opened me up to, to that kind of a thing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, doing nature things, uh, um, being out in nature. But I also landed, because of my art skills, I landed a, a job of doing a, a, a nature center. I did the mural for a whole nature center, which was a six month program. I, you know, oh, I was wow. borrowed, from, yeah. So, you know, the art helped me out again. Mm -hmm. So, so here I am doing um, a whole nature center. It was, it was a good uh, 1,200 square foot of art. So all the walls were muraled. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. So and, now, and the budget, you that, was that a part of your job or did you get paid extra for that? No, oh, that was a part of my job. That was my oh. assignment. They pulled me out and I did that assignment <laughs> for good six months. I had my supply list was fantastic. I had gambling. Oh, wow. When gambling first came out, I used gambling paints. I had the best sable oh, brushes. Yeah, the best is the best. <laughs> it's like you get to pick out the, your favorite brushes and all yeah. of that. Kind of stuff. Wow. And, 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 you know, and I even did airbrushing because, you know, also in FIT, the one thing I did learn, I learned airbrush technique from one of the greats, Radu Vero. Okay. Uh, Radu Vero. And uh, he has a couple of books, had a couple of books out. And he, he did in Romania. He was an airbrush artist and he did all the, 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 um, uh, the, the, uh, I guess the, the, uh, publicity for, you know, I guess the, the Russians and whatnot. So it was propaganda art that he did and he was fantastic, you know? So I wow. learned a lot from that, you know? Mm -hmm. So you so, picked up a lot of airbrushing from him. That's pretty yeah. interesting that you were, um, as a park ranger, you got to do such an incredible job. So is it still in existence? So is your artwork still? <laughs> Wow, yeah, you're talking um, 1986. Uh, I actually haven't checked up on it, but you see the, the way the park system is, the New York City things move. But it was a nature center, and and honestly, with the the it was the educational part of of, part of the parks department. So mm -hmm. we had a uh, basis uh, in uh, and nature centers in three other areas. So I I would say that it still exists, but I haven't checked on it in such a long time. Because when I, I go to New York, it's for specific purposes like carnival. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> right, right. So, okay, so after that, you moved on because I thought your next job was interest, very <laughs> interesting. After that. Well, well, you know, lo and behold, I took multiple tests, and 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 one, the other one that I really wanted to do was law enforcement, mm -hmm. and so I became a cop. I, I went to, I did not six months in the police academy in New York City, uh, in um, uh, in 1989. So, you know, I did six months of that and it, it was it was uh, it was sh shocking to me because naturally I never thought about law enforcement at all in that capacity. You know, understand. I thought it'd be an interesting job, but there were things that paralleled with things happening to my family because my mom, she she uh, was actually pulled onto the subway tracks in New York City uh, whilst coming home from work. And they never apprehended the person responsible for that, but she was pulled under the trash. She survived miraculously. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. But uh, all in all, you know, she survived it. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, from that point on, you know, my interest in law enforcement was to, to be, you know, of help in, in right. that capacity. Right. So, so, yeah, so I did the academy and uh, then they sent me to the, the worst places that you can police in New York. So I was I was in Washington Heights uh, at the, the the height of the crack epidemic mm. and the cocaine trade, and after that I was sent down to the 32nd precinct in Harlem. So those are those are considered A houses. There's A house right. houses, B houses, and C houses. C houses are the soft ones, you know, the <laughs> ones that that people, you know, uh, are people pushing their baby carriages and right, and right. Well, you know, they're gonna always send the rookie. It's like send the rookie <laughs> black cop down there with his people, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but but it was it was a it was a fantastic experience because you know, um, honestly. You know, growing up in the South Bronx, I, I, I mean, I was, I was, I was, I, I understood all of those things about, you know, life and so on. So honestly, it was nothing really to me. Honest, I really felt that my job as a black police officer mm -hmm. was to see the despair and everything else, but also to to help out where I can because um, policing. There was some aspects of of some cops that was just off the hook, and I had to put them back on the hook. And a few times, <laughs> you know, no, a few I times. Mean, I, and, and, and that's really interesting. No, no, no. Go ahead. There was a few times what? Well, no. There's there's a few times where I, you know, I had to say no, no, no. This this is not an this is not something that you can arrest. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times there were a couple of cops. It, honestly. Overall, they were good hearted, hearted uh, um, intended professionals, but there are some that weren't. And those are the ones that you had to pull back and say, no, this is not what you, you, you're trying to make it out to be. Right. And so, so you know, I, I was there to step in for that. I thought that was my role. But, well, but that been, Right. That must have been interesting, especially uh, when you look at what some of the things that are going on in the world today. Um, mm. and, and we're going to get back on art, but this is. <laughs> yeah. has been, that has been interesting for you um, as far as seeing what's going on in the world today in that arena with uh, police officers and the shootings and things like that. So it must make you sit back and say, oh, my gosh, you know, how how is this happening when you have a partner, when you mm -hmm. have because most police officers have partners. And they're not necessarily out there by themselves. There's always someone else. So yeah. like you, you would step in. So it must make you wonder how come nobody's stepping in on some of this stuff? Well, well, I'll hand it to, to uh, most black cops that are, are woke, um, that they are there as elements. But of mm -hmm. course, there are some that are indoctrinated to such a point that, mm -hmm. you know, it's really they, they want they want to be. Uh, down with with the blue wall, or, or I'm just using that as an expression. You know, mm -hmm. But they want to be on on the side of of the gang mentality mm -hmm. and the individuality. Is just what you know. It's not there for a lot of cops because you know you have to also work as a team. And and mm -hmm. if you and if you didn't work as a team, there are times where you know, you call for assistance and none will come, or oh, you know. Okay. Things nature so that it was a it's a delicate balance but for the mm -hmm. most part though like i said the majority of the cops they they are you know good, good cops. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the whole, whole thing is the, the social aspects of poor and crime and, and law mm -hmm. and order came into play, which is more in a conservative route. Whereas, right. you know, I was more as an artist, uh, mm -hmm. a very, a lot more liberal in some, mm -hmm. in a lot of aspects. So but, now, but, did this shape, did that shape your, did that, I, I, I would find it because, because just looking at your work and the, joy and the fun and the excitement and the vibrantness and the uh i mean it's just fun and so mm -hmm. to look at that and say oh yeah i was a cop and now i've you know some cops that have been cops for xyz amount of years they tend to have a very uh a totally different personality i'll put it like <laughs> but <laughs> you, you, you um, are creating this absolutely phenomenal work uh, that basically, to me, brings joy, brings laughter, brings excitement. And so um, that had to, I mean, how did you deal with coming off of the streets and then having the process, you know, it's like, and then it's like, now I'm, I'm an artist. So how did you process all of that to keep your sort of sanity or keep your joy and keep your spirit from getting all mucky? Well, I would draw in the squad car, mm -hmm. <laughs> the RMPs. I, I would draw, you know, I'd have a little sketchbook or whatever. And I decided, well, I'm going to try to do a little something here and there. Mm -hmm. And as, as a matter of fact, in the precinct, they started using me um, for crime scenes and things like that. So <laughs> art still played a part in that. It, but, mm -hmm. One amazing time happened, whereas, you know, I was approached by uh, another fellow officer. I, my, it was a sergeant, I think. He, it was a sergeant. He said, listen, Ryan, you know, why don't you see if you can get into this unit? And it was a forensic art unit. Um, mm -hmm. They did the want to post the sketches. And I'm like looking, I, I'd always look at those at roll call. I'd always look at the, the, the sketches and say, wow, I wonder who does these. I had no, it didn't occur to me. <laughs> so, so what happened was I looked into it and my luck came about, whereas there was a vacancy. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and with that vacancy, um, you know, I was interviewed and took me took a couple. Uh, 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 it took about a year to get me on. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I went with my portfolio, I did the interviews and everything else. And then I was appointed to the position. In uh, in uh, oh, in in uh, ninety four, mm -hmm. you know, and um, you know, I started actually. Uh, it was January of of ninety five. Actually, I started, but I was I was I, I was bought in, and I had to wait till certain things cleared and whatnot. But the funny thing is that the person that that I took the place of was a former high school of art and design graduate. Oh wow! wow. <laughs> That's really exciting. And, yeah, wow. and he and he did phenomenal work. His wow. his pencils, his sketches was phenomenal. Of course, as at that with that situation, it opened up opportunities mm -hmm. to basically do a little inside work. Of course, the mm -hmm. sketches and so forth and my drawing skills came into play with right. the the post of sketches, but I also introduced computing to the unit. Um and uh, and you know uh, doing uh, age progression mm -hmm. and um, and um, and we call it DOA enhancements because mm -hmm. no one wants to see you know uh, a, a DOA for identification looking all you know so we kind of do a little something to it and the age progression you we use our artistic abilities to do the mm -hmm. pencil drawings or the computer drawings at that time to do you know right. to, to get a likeness. And mm -hmm. so I, I did computer renderings in Illustrate in, in, in Photoshop and mm -hmm. and so you know I did cards and all those other fun things too for people that's retiring and whatnot. So I, you know I continued on that. But wow. at that time also it gave me the opportunity to uh, I had a, I, I got a studio in Dumbo um, mm -hmm. uh, in in Brooklyn the the the, the nice area of uh, where all the art is like really crazy right now. Um, mm -hmm. the, the district underneath the, the Manhattan Brooklyn Bridge. And it was an art colony for, for the most part, uh, like 400, 500 artists in that square area. And so, you know, I, I managed to get my portfolio a little bit more enhanced and, and mm -hmm. I, I 
sent out works to to uh, Vega Fine Arts, Vegas Fine Arts, and certain other places to to try to get my 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 posters to get into the the genre of of uh, of the black art uh, artist market that that existed at the time. During the whole black, it was sort of that whole black art movement, or when when black art was really taking off. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and it's funny. I used to see on patrol. I'd always uh, one of my beats was was you know a nursing home, and going in there and seeing all of Charles Bibbs' works and so forth. I wanted to to be like that. I mean, that popular in all those mm -hmm. places, and so that was he was an inspiration in that regard because uh, mm -hmm. you know it opened me up to those possibilities. So I started sending works out and so forth, mm -hmm. and eventually, you know, I decided, well, you know, I'm going to try to. Get my stuff out myself, mm -hmm. and so you know, I painted uh, uh, during the night after work, and uh, you know, of course, I went through that whole thing where you know, sleepless nights, very tired, and everything else, but trying to get my my portfolio to a point where you know it's marketable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But during during that time, I did freelance work as well. Okay, so some magazines and everything else. So you've been a, you basically, I think that's amazing because a lot of times artists will. Um, they'll take on a job and, but the job kind of takes over and then, you know, they may be able to get some art in. Cause a lot of times it's like, well, you have to kind of horn your craft, but you also have to pay for your craft. And mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to find that balance, but it sounds like you really found, you were able to have a really nice balance between your work because you ended up falling right into being able to draw yeah. At both of your jobs, I mean, at both of the jobs that you've had, um, it seemed like the door was open for you to be be creative within your within your job category, which was amazing. yeah, or, or just my my gifts, you mm -hmm. know, my blessings, uh, if you want right. to put it that way. Because no no matter what, for some reason, art always found me. It mm -hmm. found a place for me, you know, right. and I continued doing it. I fed it, and it fed me. Right. And, and, you know that whole uh, um, uh, that whole thing. It, it worked out totally in my favor. Yeah. And you know, so it, it's been it's been I've been I've been blessed with that. Mm -hmm. I know, and that's what I love about it. So um, you're from Trinidad. Um, you came here when you were younger, when you were young, but that whole Trinidad spirit never left you. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I longed. You see, I, I growing up in the Bronx, mm -hmm. I grew up away from the West Indian community, which mm -hmm. actually was in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, um, and and the the northern part of the of the Bronx. But I I I, I grew up with Puerto Rican brothers and 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 you know, uh, American uh, brothers. And, and I mean, honestly, I, I I longed for that culture, but I didn't have it. So I, I my longing continued on. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, working you know as a cop actually introduced me to to I went to Eastern Parkway maybe once or twice before I was a cop. And it was not a place to be because <laughs> it was rough back. It was rough back then. I, I have to put it that way uh, because there's a lot of violence at that time. This was the, the 70s. So you mm -hmm. can understand, you know, the, the sophistication of Carnival. Now, forget it. It's it's so well put together and well streamed. And, mm -hmm. and the way that police handles the crowd control and so forth, though it's the biggest parade in New York City and it doesn't get it gets a negative appeal all the time but it brings in the most people in New York City wow. um, yeah with, with that I, I, I uh, being a cop I got to be on Eastern Parkway uh, at times and, and honestly um, I loved being there because I got the best of both worlds I I, I was I was uh, at the FET. <laughs> <laughs> as a term for celebration, uh, the, I was at the carnival. I've seen all the masqueraders and so forth, the co the the costumes and everything else. And and I said, you know, this is a subject matter that I can pursue because, you know, it's something that I long for, and mm -hmm. and it's 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 totally who I am. I, I'm from Trinidad, the the place where Trinidad uh, where carnival originated from. They say Brazil, but it's Trinidad. Mm -hmm. So you know, with all of those things, I I decided whilst I I was in the on a job. I started painting carnival uh, uh, themed paintings, and my first one um, 
it's it's a missing piece right now because I put it in a police auction, and uh, you know we have a, a widows and orphans thing, and, right? And I didn't even get the money I deserved for it. Someone snatched it up. I couldn't I couldn't find out who the person. It's still a oh, mystery. Wow. I couldn't find who the person is or anything. But it was a phenomenal painting. And wow! That wow! Was, yeah. I did a, a I, in 2002. I, that's when I really got in with my studio. Started really exploring um, that as a, as a painting subject matter. So how did that? Um, what was it like? Because like okay, so you literally grew up outside of your culture. So what was it like coming back and experiencing your culture? Well, uh, you know, at home. My siblings, they, they, not that they, they didn't want to be the Caribbean or anything like that, but the culture in hand was, was more American. So we, we all lost our accents and everything, but mm -hmm. the food stayed the same. My mom, she spoke with her, 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 uh, Trinidad accent. You know, they say Trinidadians, we sing when we speak. So I got a lot of, out of that. And of course, her friends kept us within bounds, but, um, my longing to, you know, enjoy um, soca music uh, at the time, calypso. I love calypso forever, and uh, and reggae. You know, it gave me the opportunity to really delve into that. I, you know, yeah. I I play that for my kids all the time. And I said, no, nope, we're not playing anything else. I mean, we play American, you know, uh, R and B, uh, soul, and everything else because you know Sundays I listen to gospel <laughs> because I mean, you know, nothing beats. Exactly. You know, Right. Yeah. So, so honestly, but um, it just afforded me the opportunity now to really let go and and, and embrace my culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty. I I like that um, that you were able to recapture your culture. You were able to go back and recapture who you were, and because that's one of the things I always talk about when when people, especially when people adopt children. Um, I always ask them, well, how are you uh, reintegrating them into their own culture? Because yeah. there's one of the things that you had said was there was a longing, even though you were six years old. I think you said you were six when they moved. And yeah, I was, six, say, I was six when I came here. Right. And most people will say, oh, he was six. He can't remember all of that. But in, on the inside of you, there is a longing to reconnect to that culture and that's one of the things so i'm i'm like it's great and and not just reconnect but to be able to share it through your art um yeah. you know because you grew up you probably grew up you know just like i did drawing the things that were kind of set before you or yeah. drawing the things but then once you became of age you were able to reconnect and reestablish um, who you were as an as a person and as an artist. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, the reason why I, I paint my Caribbean figures, I, I want to share the experiences uh, mm -hmm. that the the subject matter has, as well as my experience uh, viewing and taking pictures of that the, that subject matter, that mm -hmm. subject or that that person that I photograph. You know, uh, the way that, that I do things as far as it goes with my Caribbean art, my painting on Carnival, um, you know, honestly, I, I enlisted the whole family. We all got cameras. <laughs> <laughs> so we go out there to the Carnivals and, and, and honestly, it, it's, a, it's a phenomenon now because it's worldwide. It started in Trinidad and then it migrated to all of the other uh, um, islands and uh, I mean, the Brazilian and the Spanish and whatnot have that whole thing going on too on that side. But as far as um, the originators, uh, our thing, whether it's tourism or whatever, everyone started to express their cult, their, their cultural island differences uh, mm -hmm. through a form of carnival. Because mm -hmm. you know, you have the book, the uh, uh, was it the Bahamas? They have junk canoe, and there's certain other forms of it. But the originators. Uh, it derived in, in Trinidad from from you know our enslaving, our mimicry, our making fun of of the, the slave masters at the time with our own thing, and, you know, and through riots and other things to to suppress our expressions, we made it happen, and we continued mm -hmm. on to this day. But but you know, each person that I, I, I that we photograph as a family or my, my we take I take those imagery 
uh, and, and I transpose them to to canvas. And and what I try to do when I I, I take these imageries is that uh, I, I choose the ones that have a certain expression, a certain way of expressing joy and fulfillment in where they are during carnival. You know. Oh, so uh, let me share a couple because I just I mean I love your work and I love the personalities that are here. And you have a piece right behind you, which I really love that one, because I love her expression. Um, the young lady behind you. Yeah, I love her. Right. <laughs> right, I just love her expression. I love the blue hair. I just love, but it's her expression, because she's on your website, and I just love, and this young lady right here, I love, I, you know, there's just something about the way you created her, her body and how you captured her expression. Um, I mean, it, the photograph must be fantastic, but I just, I love um, how you've captured her. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, she she stood out. I mean, and, and you know, she, she engaged with the camera perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, her, her, her expression was, was a, um, yeah, it, it's a moment of her 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 joy of being there you know her sexual her sexuality it's just out there and she's you know she's a lighter skinned woman and generally what I, I do because the whole nature of you know the I mentioned something about the brown the brown paper bag situation I, I generally like to paint darker imagery because uh, uh, the lighter skinned people represent a lot of commercial aspects of of, of carnival. But but you know there's so many things about her. Her costume was phenomenal. Her expression was phenomenal. But, uh, uh, um, her her um, her anatomy was just there for me to paint. And so I, I enjoyed painting her in that moment that she's in. And you know I haven't I don't I haven't reached out. I don't know her. Um, but what I do is I tell people if you recognize this person. Uh, send, let me know. Send me a message, an instant message or so, so that we can connect. And I've connected with a few other people through my paintings. Oh, oh my God, that's my cousin! Or and it's it's a really nice feeling. And people, you know, don't yeah. know that. That's that pretty amazing that you connected with them because. I, you know, that, you know, where they can go to your website and it's like, hey, I've been immortalized because <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what you've done. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, there is it's in in uh, the way that art is, it, it lasts forever. It, mm -hmm. You know, uh, imagery lasts uh, uh, in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So honestly, as long as the painting stays alive, the imagery is going to it's going to transcend forever as long as it, as long as it can. That is with with the, the way that this this destructive world is. <laughs> 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 I know. But, but, well, now this young lady, I really, this is one of my, I, I love her because I love, uh, I think I told you the bullets. She has like bullets on. And I think this is what you were talking about. Uh, the darker, the darker skin color. She has this bright red lipstick on. Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, I, and, and she's just fun. I mean, it's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful picture. Absolutely yeah. beautiful, and it's just full of 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 vibrant. I mean, it's just very vibrant. Well, it, it, you know, um, Carnival. What they do, they have is they have mass bands. Everyone is in a mass band, and the mm -hmm. mass bands are the ones that, that that create the costumes, the concepts, and everything else. There's a lot of concepts that people go into. That you know, there's there's old school concepts and, and characters that exist. Mm -hmm. But her character, the costuming, and everything else was just mastermind. It was it was phenomenal. And it's this uh, this band, this mass band, is uh, Ramage. Mm -hmm. And, and Ramage, um, I, I don't know where the word derives from, but it means you, you know a, um, a hummingbird enjoying itself in a certain moment. So that's mm -hmm. the, the whole the meaning of Ramage. But mm -hmm. this image was fantastic in the sense that it had so many statements to it. First mm -hmm. of all, you see she she's tied up and she looks very constricted. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, she's free to express in her in her in her natural, you know, suit. Uh, you know, not to mention too, you know, the the way the feathers, her dark skin, and right. the, the the amount of of colors that I put in her skin. It was mm -hmm. a phenomenal painting in the sense uh, that 
that you know I, this there's so many hues of colors on there you know oh, yeah. And, yeah yeah and, and and just creating that that was that was it was fun now now the name of this piece is called it was supposed I was trying to figure out I said the Ramage warrior and that I don't fit and then you know I went on to some other things but then I said you know what she is so sexual and so mighty besides that too she she's thick she's a thick Black Jesus, woman. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, I said, you know, ammo galore. I don't know if the, the James Bond movies and so forth, you know, uh, you have all these names, uh, you know, Pussy Galore. And, and uh, so I said, you know, ammo galore, because she's certainly well equipped. <laughs> but at the same yeah. ammo galore is just perfect. Right. So it, it, it is, because it is. She has, it's like, there's just such this amazing beauty about her. And especially the way you have her plume, her feathers, her plume is just fantastic. So it's almost like you have this war and beauty all intermixed together in this wonderful, rich uh, tones and everything. Um, and then you have this, and you know she's bold because she has this bright red lipstick on. Yeah, It's almost like I am who I am and that's it and, and, and loving it. And so well, there's just, you know, so much uh, to say about this particular character. Well, she, she's the essence of what Carnival is. And you, uh, you know, forget about the social, and we joke around a lot, uh, the family about social constructs, but the whole nature of, of what a beautiful person is in America is rapidly changing. And, and this is one of those things that I have here to, to help rap make it change because honestly, She's beautiful. There's nothing about her or the pictures that I take, whether a small or large, uh, thick or thin, that that why why should we have one American version of what a beauty is? Mm -hmm. So she is definitely fighting against that norm of of white society. Right. And, and so so you know when when I do my work, I do things based on those concepts as well. You know, mm -hmm. and so so the, the, here, here it is a perfect representation of that. Yeah, I, I definitely think because she's I think she was the one that I originally saw first um, mm -hmm. of your work. And I, I was like, those are really big bullets <laughs> wrapped <laughs> around her. And you're right. It's like there's this restriction on her. But the, and then you have these beautiful plumes coming out of her, out of the back and hair and everything, and this ginormous smile on her face of sheer enjoyment, sheer enjoyment, loving who I am, loving what I look like. That's the beauty of what this picture represents to me is like, I am beautiful and it doesn't matter uh, what everything else may look like, I'm beautiful. And that's what's so, amazing about this particular picture. It just shows all her beauty and the fact that it's not what you perceive of her beauty, it's what she perceives of her beauty. That's perfect. That's that's a perfect, uh, you know, uh, comment on, on that. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so I really, yeah, that's one of my, that was one of my favorite ones that I saw. And then here is, cause I know you do a lot of females but this one you sent me a you sent me a mail, so I'm gonna post him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I I have to I have to do that have to do that. I mean, it, this is a, a junk canoe, and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, Barbados Carnival, and, and and you know, I, I had a show in Miami. It was a phenomenal show. My wife set everything up and everything, you know. And, and honestly, it was it was um um. But, but there's a lot of Bayesians that actually um, uh, are instrumental in the whole making of Miami. Mm -hmm. and, and and so the, the God Gallery was celebrating uh, Junk and New and, and, and so on. And so now, I, I, tell, tell us what a Junk and New is. Uh, Junk is a, a festival. It's it's a, it's another carnival like expression. Each mm -hmm. island has has their own particular take on things because, of course, the the West Indies was settled by by the French, the the Spaniards, uh, the Dutch, and, and so there's there's a whole lot of things with that, 
that uh, that came about. It's the Bahamas. I, I <laughs> I'm saying Barbados, but it's it's the whole Bahamas. The Bahamas, uh, um, the island, and the, the Bahamas came and they they were instrumental in the whole notion uh, of creating Miami. And I, I said that wrong, but but um, at any course, you know. Um, this he's a player. He's one of the players in Junkanoo, in Junkanoo, and uh, he's he's one of the band leaders. I call this uh, bell bells and whistle. Um, the costume was phenomenal, and and, and his expressions was, was great. His dark skin, uh, and 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 the the whole the contrast between the yellow, the blues, and everything else. You know, I thought it was it was a fitting uh, piece to do. You know, so so that's what this. But I, I do males. I, I you know I, I paint males. I shouldn't say do males in size, but I paint. I paint. I paint. I try to to um, delve into the cultural aspects of 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 West Indians as well. So uh, the the fact that you know the during the Middle Passage, a lot of us was sent to Brazil, uh, a lot was in the Caribbean, and, and a lot was was uh, was sent to the Americas. The majority supposedly was sent to Brazil. That's the studies that said, you know, most of the, the majority of the slaves went mostly to Brazil, and it was fierce and brutal. brutal. But, but the whole notion of the diaspora, um, whether it's the American diaspora, uh, or, or the Caribbean diaspora, you know, we're still all one people. And the funny thing is that, you know, being that the uh, uh, the Bahamians uh, the, uh, settled in 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 that part of of, of America and Florida, and generated a whole uh, uh, you know a thing, you know, uh, bringing people and establishing a city for the most part, you know, that that's phenomenal. And, and I'll say that. Um, a lot of the diaspora, there's some similarities in all of the cultures there with the islands and everything else. Uh, even with Brazil, uh, with uh, with um, uh, New Orleans and their their uh, carnival, you know, uh, there it's also there's some intertwining uh, relationships uh, that are shared uh, with with uh, with New Orleans and the Mardi Gras, Trinidad, and even Brazil. So uh, just making that as a statement, I, I have to say that, that there's so much similarities in, in the whole African diaspora, mm -hmm. you know. Right, and and I do, and I have, I I saw, I was on your website. You have some children, and um, just all kinds of, uh, you you do have a variety of yeah. people on your website. So, and that's one of the things I want to let everybody know. Definitely go and check out his website. It is WaldenRay.com. Uh, yeah, well, Walden Ray. <laughs> Walden Ray. I, well, I'm calling you Walden. I think uh, I, yeah. I mess up a name every show. It's Walden Believe Ray. Me. It's go and check him out. It's WaldenRay.com. I'm going to be like the, the 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 talk show host that's always messing up names. And <laughs> Well, it's, it's, two, it's you're talking about two first names, Weldon and Ryan. So you know um, that that's really that's really it. Uh, people call me Ryan Weldon. Some people call me w Wendell Walden. So you know, but it's Weldon Ryan. Uh, so you know. check him out at WeldonRyan.com, and that's why yeah. I, yesterday I'm like uh, Thursday. I'm like, say your name for me so I can get it right. Yeah, um, yeah. Check, out, check him out um, at WeldonRyan.com. You can also connect with him on Facebook, Instagram. That's what you see running at the bottom. His um, Instagram is Weldon uh, R R Y zero three, and his Facebook page is Weldon Ryan. Twitter Weldon Ryan one, and YouTube. Just click in his name, Weldon Ryan, and when you go into YouTube, and trust me, you'll get all kinds of stuff um, <laughs> on the YouTube channel um, to look at something. We're actually going to, I'm actually going to show you, and I'm going to have him walk us through um, one of his, how his drawing style and how he goes about creating uh, a piece of work. I want to show that. Actually, I'm going to bring that up and just have you kind of walk them through because i think you are i'm trying to see here you're drawing oh. john lewis and this is yeah. uh this is actually recently i think you did this in july um yeah. i find a lot of artists have been doing 
things, some of the things like this, where they've been sharing uh, their drawing techniques and or how they create what they create. So um, I know when you and I talked, um, you have phenomenal drawing skills because it comes out of your background, but you also use other techniques to to put your work on on your canvas. So share a little bit about that. Uh, I'm just going to show this. I turned the sound down because it was kind of loud because I want to be able to hear you talk while it's being shown. OK. OK. All right. I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Hold on. OK. There we go. It's roughly, you know, it's, uh, I try to do studies and, and you get a lot from doing studies. First part is, of course, the drawing, the underneath drawing. You know, I mentioned the opaque projector. I do use an opaque projector, but, you know, honestly, the trick, the drawing underneath it is, is important and it's the foundation for everything. So from here, you know, I do, do, I, I retrace things and make some corrections as I go. And, and and from this point on, you know, I'm trying to to recreate the drawing at the same time. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm also studying it as well. You're talking about a two hour study to do a complete painting. So so my whole. So thing then this is a study. This is this is uh, you're just creating a study. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and and so so really what I'm trying to establish is uh, I'm trying to establish major shapes uh, uh, first the drawing which is you know foundation but just major shapes and also uh, the color aspects of things the warms and the cools so I'm putting all that information down right now uh, trying to establish you know uh, um, another jump off you know um, I I look for you know uh, we, we call it. Uh, uh, a map. We, we find uh, key points to uh, to the painting or rendering that I do, and, and so so this is what this is. So um, I'm laying down all the colors. Of course, I, I'm doing something wrong. I'm using a smaller brush, but at the same time, sometimes my equipment is kind of lacking because you know financially it it's, so now uh, it's are you very from, Are you working from a photograph? as well uh, yeah i'm working from a photograph what i've learned to do over the course of time is you know i i i use my computer now before i would use a um, you know a, a still uh imagery to to do things but still imagery the good thing about still imagery it has all your colors worked out uh when you're talking about painting from a laptop uh um, you're talking about painting now from light so it's a difficult. It's more difficult, in a sense, to to paint from a, a, an image on your computer screen or on your laptop screen. So yeah, so I'm pl I'm putting down all the darks first. You know, yeah. you paint dark to light and oils. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. Um, and uh, of course, uh, as you go along, you know, the whole notion of painting, uh, you you select, you you mix your colors. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, you you put it down. You you make your adjustments, and you re put it down. So right. this is the nature of art. You know, nothing is really consistently. You know, when you lay a color down, it's not necessarily going to stay there. So right, right it's now, not I'm being, the color that's going to be there. Yeah. So I, you know, we're working. One thing I would say is, as an artist, you're 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 an illusionist. You're you're actually creating a, a, a magic show in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, so you know you you pull you push and pull certain things and if it doesn't work you 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 uh, readjust so um, yeah that's that's what this is right now um, yeah we're gonna speed it up a little bit yeah 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 so so now I've got I've got all the uh, the docs pretty much established mm -hmm. and now I'm trying to go to the middle tone or middle middle value uh, and so forth and then of course after the middle value I move on to to the highlights and mm -hmm. and so so that's that's the nature of how I do it uh, mm -hmm. it's just been tried and true honestly these are techniques that I I had to condition myself to do because mm -hmm. I'm technique I, I pretty much learned on my own. You know, I, 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 although I had instructors to give me foundations, uh, everything else from here on is is what I developed. You know? Yeah, it's like because now you're putting in all the lights, and you can see the difference in the color, um, mm -hmm. in in the color. And it's interesting because you 
you have a lot of uh, your your drawing background. And I just uh, one of the things I I really thought it was interesting how you lay out your entire you lay out. I, I thought it was interesting how you laid out your drawing um, mm -hmm. of image, uh, how that was laid out. Um, I thought that was really, you know, it's like you and we you and I talked about that. It's like, um, sometimes you you draw with your paintbrush, you know, it's like especially when you come from a you're a sketcher, you're a drawer, you do the same thing in the way you paint because the way you're, you know, watching you paint, it's almost like uh, your paintbrush becomes a pencil and yeah. you are literally um, drawing on the canvas and you can see, now you can see the colors really developing here on this right. particular one. Um, and we'll go all the way to the end because I, <laughs> so here we yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was a good nine minutes or so. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was quite a few minutes, but look at the development of it. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, it, you know, just the feel of his skin, um, you know, the folds in his skin are absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah, so, well, you know, <laughs> as soon as I pulled put it online, it was purchased fast. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. It's a pretty phenomenal piece. Yeah. Now, now I, I do have prints of this as well. So, you know, um, I do it on G clay on canvas and gallery wrap. So, mm -hmm. you know, this I still have available for, for G clays. And now so can, uh, can people, can they find that on your website? Yeah. Yeah. It's on, it's on my website. Um, okay. You know, I, I try all of my paintings, all of the imagery, you know, all of the elements on there. Basically, you know, um, the whole uh, G clay situation exists. You know, uh, if it's special requests, I can embellish anything to mm -hmm. to make it more personable for for the individual. As far as collection and and for collectors, you know, a, a, a print is worth something. But mm -hmm. uh, a, an embellished print, of course, you know, it's worth, worth more, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's worth so. more. So definitely, if you're interested um, in his work, like he said, this particular piece is he still has these available in G clays. Um, you can also get them hand embellished um, on canvas. Um, just go to Weldon. Well, ha. Ah. Weldon, Weldon Ryan. Weldon Ryan go, I know, and I had the name and then it, my mouth didn't want to say it right. So yeah. go to WeldonRyan.com and check out his work. And definitely, I love that piece. I love that piece. Um, yeah, you know, right. <laughs> It'll go on YouTube and see all my videos and everything else. What it does is it also brings up my numbers and give me more ability to exactly. command more go and, Right. Go and, go and subscribe <laughs> to this page. Also, go and subscribe to the Media Blackness Fine Art page. I'm always just like, Absolutely. I never get around to it. Um, if you're interested in seeing new artists, definitely go and check out the Media Blackness Fine Art page. But we want to thank, because I think we've hit the 7 o'clock seven o'clock oh, um, yeah. um, okay so share with it's there's a young artist out there looking to um to grow as an artist looking to grow looking to um get to where you are what mm. would you have what would you tell them right right about now uh well you know you have to have a, a total commitment to art um, and uh, any avenue you you have to to be in a show or, or or be around other artists, take it because you learn from other artists. Uh, as far as your education and art, you know, s people like realism. I do realism for the most part, but you don't have to be a realist to be an artist. You know, you, you've seen so many artists that that actually are creative, and whatever they put on paper is magic. I mean, mm -hmm. it's there. So just give it a go. Push yourself. Put it on paper, canvas, whatever, and and have a fun time with it. Mm -hmm. So, what's your lasting words? What would you like to share with everyone before you go? Uh, it, it's um, I, I you know it's funny. I, I have thought about it, <laughs> but, but <laughs> I know I tell people they're like, Louise, you didn't tell me this at the when we talked. You could have threw that out there so I could have prepared it. 
<laughs> well, well, my 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 one word that I'll say to anyone is, you know, um, don't give up on your art because your art doesn't give up on you. Uh, creativity is something that that is, it flows through through our, our diaspora and just put it on, put it out there. Just just mm -hmm. do it. Just do it. Art, art also communicates. It's it's one of the communicators. It, it creates dialogue and do all these things. You know, don't be afraid of it. Just jump in. Jump mm. in with both feet. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Weldon. This has been amazing. I'm hoping to have you and your whole family back, honestly. Um, I would love to have you guys on Living Out Loud. Just have your whole families line you all up and have you guys all on that particular show, but also to bring your entire family back for one of these shows because um, you were sharing with me about your wife. Um, I'm hoping to get her on in March um, and mm -hmm. just have her part of that women's, um, that women's one. And, but just enjoyed having you love your work um, because your work, I feel like your work, especially in times like this, um, that type of work, the excitement of it all is really needed. It's really needed. The fun, the joy, um, it's really needed in the world today. And it brings me joy. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, hang out. I'm going to close yeah, out you. this segment and hang out for a few minutes and we'll chat. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you guys. This has been absolutely amazing. Like I said, go and check out Weldon Ryan's work at his website, WeldonRyan.com. You can also check him out on Instagram at WeldonRY8903. Uh, check out his Facebook page, Weldon Ryan. Twitter, go to Weldon Ryan one and YouTube, just type in his name, Weldon Ryan, and you can check out his work. You can check out what he does um, on his website. He has all of his work, the work that's available, any of his prints, you can purchase them off of his website definitely go in, support the arts, support the black arts, and just support artists. This is a great way to support the artists. You know, Christmas is coming. Wonderful, wonderful way um, to show your love with others and get that most amazing gift. It's totally different. It's outside the box of normal jewelry. Yeah. Uh, pick up a nice painting and send them that. I think they love to have a really cool painting. So once again, this is the Beauty of Blackness, uh, Beauty of Blackness Fine Art Show, Black Art and Culture. And I am your host, Louise Cutler. Definitely check us out um, on our website at beautyofblacknessfineartshow.com. And you can see what's coming up next. We have uh, some other artists coming up um, for the next couple of weeks. And then we're going to take a little bit of a break in December because I happen to love Christmas and I don't like anything messing with my Christmas. So, but we will be having some things going on during that time. So we are here, Black Art and Culture. We are here every Saturday at six o'clock Mountain Standard Time. So come by and check us out, hang out with us. We love to have you and we will see you next Saturday.